Take somebody by the hand if you can. Holy Spirit, do what you do now. Do what you do. Meet every need. Meet every need every person has. God, do surprise people. God, surprise people. Surprise people. God, that would just be a surprise. God, you're all about supernatural surprises. And so your kingdom come. We've already prayed it, but your will be done on earth tonight as it is in heaven. Thank you, God. Thank you for these hungry people. God, your word says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They will be filled. So God, fill them up tonight. Oh. And everybody that agrees with that, say amen. amen. I love you. You may be seated. I want to just say we're just really honored to have all of you here tonight. Uh, our, some of our just dearest and closest friends, Mike and Kathy Hayes, are here with their son, Stephen, who's our dear and closest second generation friend. And um, thank you all for being here tonight. And I'm going to have, yes. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to have a Pastor Mike at the end just come up and say something, charge us, do whatever. So. Uh, I'll try not to go too long. It's, y'all help me. Say, God, help him. Help him only say what you want him to say. So, no, 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 don't, 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 don't. Josh, Josh is saying no to all of you. It's, go all night. No, 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 don't say that to my dad. Um, something that's been on my heart and that I'll continue to uh, talk about until this year is o'er. Uh, is it's always been a mystery to me to read this verse. Nevertheless, but again, that's, that's one of the words in my life, nevertheless. Come on, nevertheless. Um, so maybe for our next revival, uh, Jeremy, uh, you can make a shirt that says nevertheless. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe put it on the sleeve or something. Like so you're wearing it on the sleeve. Yes, so, so you're wearing something on your sleeve. Yeah, nevertheless. Yes, anyway, that's just a thought. <laughs> nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, everybody say, I'm turning to God tonight. Come on, I'm, I'm turning into God tonight. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. I don't know what needs to be taken away um, for what God wants to do in your life tonight, but how many of you are just say, I'm just open to that, okay? I'm open to that. Like God has good things for us. So whatever's not good, let's let him take away. Like, like tonight I was praying, you didn't see me, but I'm back there praying behind the choir while we're in worship. And I'm just thanking God for his mercy and thanking him for, you know, not letting the worst parts of me keep the best parts of me from God using. Aren't you grateful that God is that kind of good God? And I'm, I'm, I'm just thank. I was thanking God for giving me another chance. You know, um, it was weird last night, Arthur. But something was going on with my heart last night. Nobody knew it. Well, some people knew it. My closest friends knew it because when I was singing, they saw me stumble. And I walked over to the, to the. And you didn't even know this, but I walked over to the organ just to hold myself up last night. And I'm thinking, okay, God, you know, come on, I'm strong, I'm, you know, and, and yet I felt something in my heart last night. Again, I went, come on. And that's what I woke up a little bit concerned about this morning. I said, God, I just, listen, I need you to fix, like, whatever needs to be fixed, I need you to fix it. So I came back out tonight, just deciding I was going to sing and worship God and, and just continue to give glory to God. And I use wisdom. My kids are always concerned now because I almost died. And so every time, how's your, how's your heart rate today? I said, I sent it to you this morning, this afternoon, and tonight. Yeah, but how was it in between? I said, it's good. But anyway, <laughs> last night, uh, Arthur, I felt like I, I felt, I, I felt like I was going to pass. That was the weirdest thing. And uh, last time I had that feeling was the last time I blew up five hot water bottles in a row. Now, some of y'all never blown up a hot water bottle, and I, I wouldn't suggest you doing that. But I did that for a living for a while, but it was the same kind of feeling that I had, I could remember. Like on that last fifth hot water bottle, I was blowing it up. I go, here I go, man. I'm gonna go out with a hot water bottle in my hand. So I thought last night I'm going out like with the power of God. Like then I just kind of stumbled a little bit. And so Chuck was sitting on the front row. He goes, are you okay? Like he was, I said, I'm okay. 
So he, he, he handed me this and it fixed it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a joke. They carry these for me. But anyway, I'm believing God like you. I said, I'm believing God like you. Because all of us got something. And if you don't got something, you got, you got something coming. But God is good. He's prepared us for whatever's coming. And we're going to fight the good fight until he takes our last breath. Until, he, until my last breath happens, I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. So anyway, I don't say to freak you out or freak my family out. But I, I'm just telling you right now that God, God for all of us wants to take some stuff away that has been veiling what he wants to do. And when I turn to the Lord, and so tonight I'm declaring to you, I'm leaning in and turning to God more than ever before. Yeah. And I just want you to join me in that journey, okay? Let's just press in for, for a few minutes. Now, now, everybody say now. now. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. So, so again, we're being transformed into the same image, same image of what? Same image of God. By the way, let me just remind you, you were created in the image of God. So make your image look good. Like don't just let it go. Think it doesn't matter. It's the image of God. So it's not, I'm not saying that to say anything, except when you look in the mirror, just remember whatever you see is the image of God. So if you want to change it, let's go. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all need surgery to help you. No, I'm just joking. It's, that was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. How do you go from glory to glory? I just want to unpack this just for a second because I want us to get it at Elevate Life Church and our family. First thing is you must recognize that you are a carrier of the glory of God. We talk about that a lot, but you carry the glory of God. We do not walk like we carry the glory of God. We do not act like we carry the glory of God. We do not understand the significance of us carrying the glory of God. But the Bible says it like this, and I'm gonna read it again because this is the New Living Translation. I got a lot of scripture tonight. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away for the Lord is the spirit. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Put an amen again on that. So all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed in his glorious image. How many of you want that in your life? 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 3 and 4 and 6 and 7 says this. Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way. What new way? Well, this picks up where, where we left off in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. That if, if we're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, then here's the next verse. Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. Well, what is the new way? To be transformed into his image from glory to glory. So he's given us this new way. He's given us this new, this new revelation, but we've got to get the revelation. So since we've been given this new way, then let us not give up. When, when life hits you, don't give up. Why? Because you carry the glory of God. You carry the glory of God into a hospital room. You carry the glory of God into a bad report. You carry the glory of God into your family. You carry the glory of God into the work. You carry the glory of God when you're trying to sell a client. You sell the glory of God, so don't give up. Don't give up. Why? Because you're a carrier of the glory of God. So he says, since God God has given us this new way that we're not just living our life, but watch this, we're being transformed from glory to glory. So we got to understand it, that we're carriers of that glory. If the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. There's a lot of people around us that they don't believe. That's why you've got to recognize that you carry the glory of God. 
Because the Bible says in the book of Matthew, let your light or the glory of God so shine before men that they see your good works and they glorify God because of you. So we're around a lot of unbelievers who their, their, their minds are blinded. They are unable, the Bible says, to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message, the glory of Christ, who is the exact, in the, is the exact likeness of God. For God who said, let there be light and darkness. In fact, why don't you just say that to whatever darkness is going on in your life right now, whatever chaos is going on in your life right now, whatever worry is going on in your life right now, why don't you just say with me, let there be light. Come on, just say it, let there be light. So let there be light in the darkness has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Wow, God wants us to not only know the glory of God, but to see it, but also to reveal it in and through our lives. So, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Put an amen on that. Whatever power you got is from God. So the world desperately needs somebody who knows they carry the glory of God. So if we're gonna go from glory to glory, we must recognize that we're the carrier of the glory of God. The second thing is don't just be a glory carrier, be a glory bearer. Now listen very carefully. I already said it, Exodus 33, 18, Moses said, God, show me your glory. Moses was asking God to show him all that made him who he was. And in response, God said, I'm gonna cause my goodness to pass in front of you. 2020, God's goodness is gonna pass in front of you, hover over you, come up on you in Jesus' name. He said, I will cause my goodness. He then hides Moses in the cleft of the rock and he passes before him, proclaiming in Exodus 34, six and seven, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger. How many of y'all glad that God doesn't get angry like you? Come on, he's, he's slow to anger. I mean, really, for real, for real. How many of y'all are glad God is slow to anger when it comes to you? I'm very glad. I'm very glad that God is slow to anger. By the way, the brother of Jesus, again, the book of James, he says, hey, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. You ever anything just blurt out of your mouth that you wish you could have taken back? By the way, you can't put toothpaste back in the tube. You, you, you cannot do it. Like, you can't unsee something, you can't unsay something. So, so here's what God wants you to understand. You're his son, you're his daughter, so he wants you to understand how powerful your mouth is and your tongue. Yeah. Now, sometimes I feel like cussing, but I don't cuss. Because you know why I don't cuss? Because I want the glory of God coming out of me. Yeah. Now, listen, I'm not going to judge you if you do. I understand it. <laughs> but when you know you carry the glory of God, what's going to come out of your mouth is going to make the impossible possible. What comes out of your mouth is gonna be something that brings life and not death. What comes out of your mouth is gonna bring hope. What comes out of your mouth is gonna bring encouragement, strength. You're gonna speak encouragement to people. So here's what God says. God says this, listen. God says, like, I'm compassionate, I'm gracious. One of the things I was talking to uh, uh, Bishop Jakes about today, we were just, we were, uh, and Josh, I'm gonna send you the text message. But, uh, cause it was just, I said, hey, if you, want, if you don't mind, just give me some feedback. Give me some feedback about your experience here. I said, is there anything we could have done better besides send a helicopter to get you in Fort Worth where you live? But since that happened to Kobe, I didn't do that. And I'm not trying to be funny. I just thought he might be a little freaked out about getting in a hospital or getting in a, in a helicopter. No, I'm, I'm, telling, I'm telling the truth. So I didn't do that. So he had to drive over there, but I, I thought about flying him a helicopter. Flying him, but anyway, so that's the truth. So, so anyway, in our discussion, one of the things that I said was that I, because he asked the question back to me. He said, listen, I, I, I value excellence like you do. So talk to me. I said, okay. And so anyway, I just told him how gracious he was. You know, one of the greatest gifts you can give people is just be gracious to him. Let, let your speech be seasoned with graciousness. Just be gracious. 
How many of you know Washington, D.C. needs a little graciousness? Come on, y'all. I don't care what side you're on. We, we need some graciousness. I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm a son of God in the earth, by the way, and I'm not going to say what they say. I'm going to say what he says, whoever they is. Y'all, y'all, okay. So the Lord, the compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love, faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. And then I've taught y'all this. Y'all are taught good. Y'all, y'all are taught this good. John 17, Jesus prayed. And the glory which you gave me, I have given to them. Everybody put up your hands right now. In case you don't know it, God has given you his glory. Why don't you just say, I receive it right now. It's evidenced by a fingerprint that you have that nobody else has had to leave an imprint that nobody else can leave. It's evidenced by 1% in your DNA that nobody in history has ever had and that only you have. In other words, that deposit, that 1% that makes you a unique individual that's only yours is a deposit of God's glory that makes you distinctive in the earth so that you can leave God's imprint everywhere you go. And again, Jesus in his prayer, he said, God, you've given me your glory, now I give it to them. And may they be one, even as we're one, I and them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So the goodness of God, as I've already said, and I'm gonna say it a hundred times this year, is the manifestation of his glory. Goodness is coming your way. The goodness of God is coming your way. I'm not just saying that flippantly. I am prophesying it and you are going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So to go from glory to glory, we need to be increasing in what his glory is. We need to be increasing in compassion and graciousness and patience and love and faithfulness and forgiveness. Increasing in these things is what will take you from glory to glory. So everything that we need to be increasing in, listen, is not for us. It's for other people. Compassion is for other people. Graciousness is towards other people. Love is for other people. Faithfulness is towards other people. Forgiveness is for other people. Caring is for other people. So, so Moses says, show me your glory, show me your glory. Okay, I'm gonna hide you in the cleft of the rock because what I'm about to show you, you're not even necessarily gonna agree with or understand, but I'm gonna cause my compassion I'm gonna cause my forgiveness. I'm gonna cause my goodness to pass before you. And by the way, by the way, when it passes before you, there's a responsibility on you to be like me. Because if you want my goodness, whatever goodness I give you, your assignment is to give it to other people. Come on, put an amen on that. So everything that we need to be increasing in is not for us, but for other people. So here's the third thing. The third thing is if we're gonna go from glory to glory, we can't just be glory bearers, but we've gotta be glory sharers. It's what I felt like God put on my heart today for you. Now you are the body of Christ, members individually, yes. God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, then prophets, teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps and administrations, a variety of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, do all have gifts of healings, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but, earnestly desire the best gifts and I'm going to show you a more excellent way. So God just didn't want you to be a carrier of his glory. He didn't just want you to be a bearer of his glory, but he wants you to be a sharer of his glory, a more excellent way. So here's what the Bible says in John 1 14. So the word became human and made his home among us. Somebody put an amen on that. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness and we have seen his glory the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Which you want first? I always like the good news first. The good news is there is a part of God's kingdom that has your name on it for you and your family. I said there's a part of God's kingdom that has your name on it with your family. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you his kingdom. And if you are a part of a tribe in the earth, and if you have a family, you're a part of a tribe of the earth. There's treasure according to Genesis 28, that God says, I will open my good treasure over your life. Watch this, why? Because you are a chosen uh, people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people to show forth the praises of God who has called you out of 
darkness into his marvelous light. Remember what I taught you a few weeks ago? And that was that God, why would God have a chosen people? Why would God choose a people? And by the way, God chooses people who choose him. Let me say that one more time. God chooses people who choose him. Have you chosen him? Because if you've chosen him and if you follow him and if you love him and if you've invited Jesus Christ into your heart, guess what? You're a chosen person of God. And because you're chosen of God, watch this now, we become a part of Abraham's blessing. Those of us that are in Christ become a part of Abraham's blessing and Abraham's inheritance. And because we do, we get all the benefits that God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 12. Now I could preach and preach and preach and preach about that, but I simply want you to get this tonight. Why does God choose you and has chosen you? And he has. Somebody put an amen on that. I am chosen by God. Put your hand on your heart and why don't you say that? I am chosen by God. Hand picked by God. The Bible says we're the apple of his eye. Now watch this. Why would God choose a people? He chooses a people because he's still looking for families and tribes to put his hand on and to demonstrate his goodness to and through. So God didn't choose people because they're any more special than any other people, yet he calls us, according to Deuteronomy 14, a special treasure to him. Why does God treasure us and want to open his treasure over our life? Because he's looking for a group of people that he can show his goodness to and he can demonstrate his goodness through. And I say, God, choose me. Come on, why don't you just say that? Say, God, choose me. So that's the good news. Here's the bad news. You don't get the part of God's kingdom that has your name on it if you keep the glory that God's given you for yourself. So again, how do we go from glory to glory? Let's make it about us just for a second. Okay, I'm a glory carrier. I'm, I'm, I'm not only glory carrier, but I'm a glory bearer. Like I bear the glory of God. So, so Jesus, one of his final prayers that's recorded in the Bible, God, you've given me your glory, now I give it to them. I was never taught that in church growing up. And I don't say that with any, any disrespect. I'm, I'm just saying I was never taught that I've been given the glory of God. Y'all heard me say that. I was a sinner, I got saved. I need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I need to understand the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, long suffering. Against such there's no law, and I'm still working on that. But I'd never really heard or been taught that I've been given the glory of God. So we are glory carriers, we are glory bearers. But watch this, he said, don't stop there. Now it turns towards other people. You're a glory sharer. You've got to share my glory. The glory of God that's in you, that's unique based on your fingerprint that you have to discover, that you have to develop, that you have to deploy. And that's what I spend a lot of time doing, coaching CEOs and my masterminds now in four different states starting in February in California, trying to teach business people and business leaders what their unique distinctive is to help them understand, okay, what, what is it about you that makes you special? What gives you the X factor for success? Now watch this, when you understand that you're a glory carrier, you're on your way to understanding that you have an X factor for success for you. But some people never discover that. They just don't think there's anything special about it. But God wants you to understand you're very special. But if you just keep your glory for yourself and you don't share it, then you don't get a part of God's kingdom that has your name on it. Second Corinthians 4, 9 through 10, listen to this. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share, capital letters in my version, in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be seen in our bodies. All of this, Paul said, to the church of Corinth is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. Wow. Okay, so God just didn't want you to be a glory carrier. He didn't want you just to be a glory bearer. He, he wants you to be a glory sharer, to share the glory of God that he's given you. So there's stuff that's gonna happen in your life that's gonna knock you down, but it's not gonna destroy you, why? Because you got the glory of God. There's stuff in your life that you're gonna suffer in your bodies, but continue to share, continue to share, no matter what in the life of who Jesus Christ is in and through your body, no matter what, and God's grace will reach more and more people and they will give thanksgiving to God and learn about the glory of God themselves. And here's the last thing I'm gonna share with you tonight. How do you go from glory to glory? Don't just be a glory carrier. 
be a glory bearer. Don't just be a bearer. Don't just be a glory bearer, be a glory sharer. And then finally, don't be just a glory sharer, but be a glory declarer. You know what my life is supposed to do? Declare the glory of God. You know what your life is supposed to do? Declare the glory of God. So let me just, let me explain this to you. Bishop Jakes talked last night about Joseph's life being a shadow of Jesus. It was so profound. It spoke to me and spoke to many people that I've talked to. But that this shadow of, of things to come, Jesus hadn't even come yet. And yet the shadow, and I can see my shadow right here. The, the shadow that Joseph's life pointed to was Jesus that had not come to the earth yet. It was a shadow of God's glory. So he became a type of Christ in the Old Testament. Joseph recognized that he was a glory carrier. He didn't just have a coat of many colors to prove it, but he had favor on every level that declared it. Let me say that again. He didn't just have a coat that proved that he was a glory carrier, but he had favor on every level, both up and down, that proved and declared the glory of God. In the pit, he had the favor of a prince. Now I'm gonna give you something prophetic, are you ready? His value was established at 20 pieces of silver. In today's money, that's five US dollars in 2020. I felt like the Lord said to me today that whatever you value has been, that whatever your value has been as a person, I speak over your life that it's about to double. I don't know what, what a value somebody has, has ascribed your life to, but watch this. He was sold for 20 pieces of silver. So here's what I felt like the Lord said. Five in scripture represents grace, the power of God to do things God's way. So listen to this. Joseph was a carrier of the glory of God in the pit. He was a bearer of the glory of God at Potiphar's house. Oh, he, he, he went to serve Potiphar's house as a slave. Come on, we heard about it last night, but Genesis 39 and his master. Haven't you always wanted a master? And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and he served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had put under his authority. So it was from that time that he had made him overseer of his house that all he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in his house and his field. Wow, what happens when you don't just carry the glory of God, but you actually bear the glory of God? Did you know that your boss is gonna be blessed because of you? Did you know where you work is gonna be blessed because of you? Did you know your family of origin is gonna be blessed because of you? Do you know that when you bear the glory of God, when you walk into a room, it doesn't matter what the room looks like. It can look like a pit or it can look like a palace. But when you walk into it, you bear the glory of God because you carry the glory of God. So listen, Joseph was also a sharer of God's glory in prison and to Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world. He didn't just carry the glory of God. He didn't just bear the glory of God so that everybody around him was blessed. Listen, some of y'all, can you handle that everybody who's around you is blessed because of you? It sounds so egotistical, doesn't it? But I'm gonna tell you something, when you have the glory of God, every room you walk into is gonna be better because you walked into it. I said every room, why? Because you're a carrier and a bearer of the glory of God. But can you handle it? Can you handle not, not just getting a raise, but not even going up in slave status? He got nothing but more responsibility. Man, I have all the responsibility, no authority. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> and everybody, watch this. The test of authority is can you handle the responsibility without giving, being given the authority? It's a huge deal. And so here he is, a slave, and his master and his house is blessed because of the favor on Joseph's life. Wow. But then he didn't stop at being a sharer. Joseph was a declarer of God's glory. Listen now, to his family of origin and his family of choice. Joseph the prince was so blessed and highly favored that the rejected son and brother of Israel 
was rewarded, and now I'm prophesying over you with double, double. You see, I don't just say stuff. Like 2020 is double, double. God gives me these words. So he sold for 20 pieces of silver. Here we are in 2020. I'm talking about his life. And then he has two sons, double, double. And these two sons, one was named Manasseh. And the reason he named him Manasseh, he said, because you have caused me to forget all my previous troubles. Here's what I'm telling you. The grace and the favor that's coming on your life, the double that's coming on your life is gonna make your trouble seem like nothing. I said nothing. He doesn't just get one son, he gets two. His next son, whose name was Ephraim, meant fruitful. Here's what God does in double, double. Here's what God's gonna do for you. This year, this year, I feel like the Lord spoke this to me. This is gonna be a year of forgetting about all the trouble that's just plagued you your whole life. It's going Kela out the dough, out the dough. And what's coming in is fruitfulness. Somebody say double, double, come on. So, I'm through. But here's, here's what glory declarers do. Genesis 50, you know the story. Then his brothers went and fell down before his face. Wait, I had this dream a long time ago. The dream I had a long time ago is y'all all gonna be like kneeling in front of me and I don't know, I'm stepping up. You know, we hate you even more, Joseph. And I'll tell you what, we hate you so much, you gone. Gone, 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 gone. All these years later, his brothers fell down before his face and they said, behold, we are your servants. And Joseph said, you know the story, don't be afraid. See, their daddy just died. He thought now that daddy's dead, Joseph's gonna unleash. Hey, can I just say a little something? This is a little something. People who treat people poorly, people who are mean to other people, I want you to listen very carefully. Why, why is it that they're like that? And we see so much of it in our world today. Every time I turn on the television, I see it. Why is that? Because mean people think other people are gonna be mean to them the way they are. I want you to really hear what I'm saying. You say, how do people be so mean? Why was that so mean? Because mean people are mean the way that they think people will be mean to them. It's a little secret. So watch this. God didn't call you to be a mean carrier. He didn't call you to be an anger carrier. He didn't call you to be a hate carrier. He called you to be a compassionate, gracious, forgiving, loving, the goodness of God carrier, the glory of God in the earth. So can I just tell you that here's Joseph, watch this, here's what he says. I'm about to, do, hey, hey brothers, I know y'all got your face dead. You think I'm about to kill you? Y'all all prostrate before me. I just would like to take this moment and say this was the dream. This was the dream. <laughs> I hope y'all know it's the dream. I told you it's going to happen. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> That's what some people want to do. Told you so. Joseph didn't do that. Another test. Another test. I was right and you're wrong. But here's what he did. He said, hey, don't be afraid. For I am in the place of God. But what you meant for evil against me, every evil thing that's ever happened to you, it don't matter if it was wrong, unrighteous, or if you brought it on yourself. Every evil thing that the devil has meant for evil against you, God means it for good. And he spoke and declared this over his family of origin. He said, in order to bring it about as it is this day, not to put you in your place, not to tell you I'm right and you're wrong, but to save many people. Therefore, do not be afraid. I'm not just gonna provide for you, brothers. Look up here at me, look up here at me. I'm not just gonna provide for you, but I'm gonna provide for all of your families because God's put me in a place where he's shown 
shown me that I don't just carry his glory. I don't just bear his glory. I don't just share his glory, but I declare his glory over you and over your descendants. And I speak the glory of God over your life. I said it already, but Habakkuk said it like this, for the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. How will the earth be filled with the glory of God? Not just by you, not just by me, but through us. I said through us. And I close with this scripture. Second Corinthians, this is the rest of the story. Second Corinthians 4, 16 and 17. This is why we never give up. Y'all listen to me. This is why we never give up. I'm telling you, if I'm your friend, if I'm your friend, I'm not giving up. You can give up, but I'm not gonna give up. I'm the father of this house. I'm not gonna give up. It may be a reason and a season for you and you go somewhere else, but I'm never gonna give up on you. Like it doesn't matter. You know why? Because I've been in the trenches. I've been in the pit. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to feel rejection in my own family of origin. I know what it's like to feel the pushback, but I'm gonna tell you something. God uses all those things to make you the kind of person that has the power to bestow glory and the power to bestow favor and the power to bestow blessing and the power to declare the goodness of God. And I declare tonight the goodness of God in this house and over your life and over your family. In the name of Jesus. This is why we never give up. Go ahead and stand. This is why we never give up, but don't leave. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small. I'm prophesying now and won't last very long. Yet they will produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and it will last forever. And then finally I end with this. So we look not at the things which are seen. I don't know what you're seeing right now, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are visible are temporary, just brief and fleeting. But the things which are invisible are everlasting and imperishable. Just for a minute, just for a minute, just for a minute, then you go get your hamburger. And I want you to lift up your hands. Nobody get anxious just for a second. First song we ever sang in this house after Celebrate Good Times by Cool in the Game <laughs> was this song, Let Your Glory Fill This House. So sing that, Let Your Glory Fill This House. Let Your Glory Fill This House. Come on, just sing that with me. I know it's old, but sing it with me. Let our praises fill our mind. Bring the lights down just a little for a second, for a second. Let each vessel offer her to you the sacrifice of praise. You alone are holy. You Here's what I want to tell you. I'm going to spend the rest of my life. I told Sheila today, I said, lay your hand on my heart. I said, pray that I will not die right now. I said, because I'm going to spend the rest of my life not just carrying the glory of God, not just bearing it, not just people around me being blessed because of it, but I'm going to share it for the rest of my life and declare it over your life. And I'm just telling you, listen, I'm just telling you. If I look at my children, if I look at Keila, and I look at Josh, and I look at Whitney as my children, my family of origin, and I tell them something's gonna happen, if I tell them something's gonna happen, Whitney, where are you? How often does it happen? I've asked this before, but I'm not looking for you to pat me on the back. If I'm your father and I say it's gonna happen, how, what's the percentage? Every time. 100%. Keila, 
If I'm your father and I tell you it's going to happen, like it doesn't even, it don't matter what it looks like. Like I'm your father because I can declare the glory of God. And I speak those things that are not as though they were. And I declare it because I'm carrying it. I'm bearing it. I'm sharing it. But watch this. The result of that is I can declare it. And what I can declare is what needs to be forgotten is going to be forgotten. And what needs to be fruitful is going to be fruitful. And that anointing is on me. And that anointing is your father is on me. And as your father, I'm just asking you, give her the mic, Keila. I just want to, I, listen, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie to God. Don't, sh- don't okay. I mean, don't lie. I'm not going to. It's 100%. 100%. Josh, put up, listen. Listen. I'm your <laughs> father. <laughs> if I tell you something's going to happen, yes, does it happen? Yes, sir, it does. Is it true? It's true. Yes or no? Yeah, I said yes already. Yes, sir. Scott, my best friend, has <laughs> been here for 34 years. Scott, tell us. Scott. Scott. <laughs> I'm, we're just testifying tonight because some of y'all don't know. You don't know. You're my friend. If I tell you, if I've told you, Scott, this is going to happen. Has it happened? It's been 80%, 90%. You're my best friend. Do not Every lie. Time. But I Every want time. you to shame the devil 100%. right now. 100%. 100%. So watch this. This year, I said this year, it's not just me. I'm the portal. Double, double is coming your way. This year, transformation is going to happen. This year, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, checks in the mail. Don't forget I said it. Finding money, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties. Ryan royalties received why because we got a lifetime of advancing the kingdom of god come on for his glory i declare over your life the goodness of god in the land of the living 2020 how much y'all go selling for 15, no, no, we gotta have 20. Because they're gonna be talking about it in 2020. Yeah. Well, you know how much that is. Yeah, it's about $5. Yeah, $5. Does a particular amount matter? Yeah, when it means the grace of God and the power of God to do things God's way. So I declare the glory of God over you that God's gonna give you the power of God to do things God's way this year. Come on, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Some of y'all have felt like me. You know, I'm talking to all the unsmart people in the world. I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm telling you, God downloads me with wisdom that humbles me to my face before him because I know I do not know. And I'm telling you, what you have not known in the past, God is gonna pour his wisdom out over your life in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Rod, that thing's gonna be solved you're gonna see, it's gonna happen faster than they say. God's gonna turn the hearts of people and it's gonna happen in the name of Jesus. I believe and I declare in 2020 that what's been locked up is getting unlocked. That door is open and in the name of Jesus. Nobody here even knows what that that means, but you keep on sowing, you keep on giving, you keep on believing. I could speak over everybody here tonight, but here's what I declare to you, come on. If God is for you, who can be against you? And this is a year for you to take dominion like never before. God, I thank you that like Joseph, I just have the power to, and the authority because you've given it to me and the anointing to say what's going to happen. And there is not one thing the devil can do about it. I want you to be seated just for a second. We're just about through. There are people in your life. Y'all just give me a minute. Can you give me a minute? You can go to your hamburger in a minute. Still before eight o'clock, so listen. How many of you received that word tonight? You received that? Put your hand on your heart and say this with me. Say, I am a glory carrier. carrier. 
So now I charge you to act like it. I'm a glory bearer. So in the name of Jesus, get used to everybody around you, their life going up when you can't see it for yourself and be happy about it. They're blessed because of you. I speak over your life that you're a glory sharer. I commission you to share the glory of God. And then in the name of Jesus, no matter what we see, let's just keep declaring it. Keep speaking those things that are not as though they were. Because you know what? (sighs) My case, when you know you're a father, and you do, and you're not just a father of origin, but you're a spiritual father, when you know that, the things you say are anti, they're antithetical, they're paradoxical to what's being said. But the authority that you have is to say it and it happens in the name of Jesus. I believe it 100%. And all I can do is tell you with my own children, if I tell them it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Let's be those kind of people in the earth. If I declare this over your life, it's gonna happen. You are the healed, you are the whole, you are the blessed, you are the highly favored in the name of Jesus. You're not gonna be people that need miracles in the name of Jesus. You're gonna walk in rooms and you're gonna be miracle workers. You're a miracle worker. First time that Ryan, we, Ryan was in our church many, many years ago. First time he came back, he came, I think even before you came to the church, you joined my mastermind. And in his first mastermind, I named him Ryan the Kingmaker. You know why? Because God's called him to make, king, to, be, to make kings with what he does. But watch this. He's going to do it now for the glory of God. So you know what he's got on his McLaren now? Some of y'all don't even know what a McLaren is. It's a car. His license plate says Kingmaker because he took the word of the Father and he put it on his, even on his car. And guess what? You're going to make kings for the glory of God. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So that's just an example. But watch this. Some people don't do anything with it. They hear the word. They don't put it on their car. They don't put it on their mirror. They don't write it on the table of their heart. But when you write it on the table of your heart, that word that was spoken, it comes to pass. So I'm going to keep speaking it. Till I take my last breath, till everybody around me takes their last breath, because by God, let me say it again, by God, I'm a glory declarer.